Okay, hi. So I'm here with my dad. He's decided to do this interview for us today. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? My name is Stephen Arthur Earl Jobbit. I'm okay. your dad. Okay. So um, the first question that I'd like to start off with is, uh, have you lived all your life in Canada? Uh, no, actually. I was born in Canada, born in Fort William, Ontario, which is mm -hmm. now part of Thunder Bay. And then... I was an exchange student in Finland for a year at the end of the 1980s, 88, 89, and I lived a total of about three years in Hungary in the 90s, and uh, then we lived for five years in California. Nice. Until 2013. Okay. So, um, out of, uh, you gave me all of these events that you are significant to Canada and that you have lived through, and what I was wondering is, um, which one of these events do you feel has uh, affected you the most, like, personally? Hmm. Well, the first one would be the, there's two, I guess, They're, they all affected me, but the Olympics, the Montreal Olympics in 1976, because so I remember that being in my grandma's basement watching those, and I was about six years old, or six years old, and I, it was my first real awareness of being part of a nation, being Canadian, okay. watching those Olympics. The second one, was maybe the uh, the Montreal massacre at the Ecole Polytechnique when 14 women were killed, mm -hmm. right? They separated the boy, the men and the women were separated and Marc Lapine killed the women. And um, it just was eye-opening for me that sort of, you know, I was in first year university and just realized that my life as a male is different than a woman's experience, for sure. Okay. Um, and that, uh, that we should start listening very seriously to the voices of feminists. So it really made me aware in a way that was that I had never been aware before that female experiences are different than male experiences. <coughs> okay. and, and I realized I had to pursue that. Yeah. That's a good answer. Um, to understand it better. Yeah. So um, another question that I wanted to ask you is, uh, did any of these events change the way you view Canada? I suppose they all did. And my view of Canada, my understanding of Canada and being Canadian is always shifting. Um, one was the, the Canada Act in the early 80s when Canada effectively, and from a constitutional point of view, became independent from Great Britain. Mm -hmm. Because up until that point, uh, all our constitutional laws, we didn't have a constitution uh, of our own. So it was a, the patriation of the Constitution. So any major changes had to be approved by British Parliament. And um, so I was kind of a, really, it changed my view. Like I, I realized at that point, it was 1980, so I was 10, 11 years old. And, and I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait we're not, we're not independent? Yeah. <laughs> was it 1982? Uh, well, you have the timeline. And it was, um, it realized that we were part of a, a colonial system. So it forced me to really understand Canada as part of a colonial project in the Americas. Okay. And it's something I'm still working on to understand better today. The other one was the, the referendum in 1995. Because I, I have a memory of the very first referendum in 1980. Um, so it was the second referendum for Quebec independence. And I realized a few things. Because I'd lived overseas at that point, about four years total, in Hungary and Finland. I'd started questioning things that I've not never questioned before about Canadian identity or Canadian nationalism. Um, I never realized that I was part of a system that was patriotic and all this and, and, and doesn't ask us to question our nation. So the referendum really forced me to, to consider the essence of Canadian nationalism and Quebec nationalism and the uh, desire to, to separate. Um, and I was, uh, you know, on many levels, very, very sympathetic to the Quebecois. Right in the separatist movement, um, but then I realized it forced me to realize that uh, when Jacques Parizeau gave his defeat, the speech when they were defeated, and he says, "Well, you know, it was just the Anglo's and the foreigners," and, I, and then I realized, well, all nationalism are, nationalisms are tainted with racism and so forth. So maybe even Canadian nationalism. Anyway, so it forced me to reconsider the essence of Canadian nationalism. I also realized that um, I like Canada with Quebec in it. I don't want Quebec to go. That's very selfish on my part, yeah. but they're, in my mind, one of the sexiest parts of Canada. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, to wrap up this interview, uh, my last question is, uh, 
So you teach history at to university students, and I was just wondering um, if you were a Canadian historian, which you are not, which uh, Canadian <coughs> historical event um, would you feel would be good to teach history students? Um, well, because I teach world history, so I think we can be bring Canadian stories into world history. I think it would definitely be. Um, when Canada joined the coalition of the willing in the invasion of Afghanistan in 2001, in October, okay. fall 2001, after the, the uh, September 11th attacks. Um, Canada became an active member of a war on terror. It fundamentally shifted uh, our role in the world, a post-war role, uh, from one of, of peacekeeper to, to one of an active combatant. Um, it, uh, it would be a really great way to, to bring Canadians into like to bring Canadian students uh, into uh, a discussion of world events and, okay. you know, question like terrorism, why we're fighting a war against terror in Afghanistan, <laughs> who, you know, we're part of an invading force, mm. who put the Taliban in power in the first place, right? When you ask, you start digging deeper, it was the Americans, it was part of a, a coalition that we were part of. So, you know, there's a bit of hypocrisy, you can dig, dig deep into question notions of terrorism and then Canada's role in the world and its changing role in the world. So I think it was a very, um, it would be a very, very, very good okay. topic to bring into a university level class. Interesting. So, um, yeah, thank you for sitting down with me. This has been a really, really interesting interview. I liked what you had to say. So, uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for considering me for your okay. history project. Yes. <laughs>